Hey, it's Coach Taylor from SmarterTeamTraining.com. i got to be honest. I, I'm very uh, appreciative uh, of the emails that have been sent over the last couple of weeks. Yes, uh, the show has taken a little bit of a, a hiatus. Uh, we have so many things going on right now, and, and some I, I don't really want to necessarily share in a show, but uh, if you're following us on social media, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, I know the guys are even posting some things on LinkedIn, et cetera, uh, you get a chance to see some pictures and some other things uh, that will be coming down the pipeline here that are really, really cool that I've had to really um, spend some time on. So I appreciate the enthusiastic emails from so many of the listeners uh, that uh, now's the time, man. We're, we're fired back up, and uh, we got a list of awesome uh, interviews coming. And the first one we're going to start with is Jed Johnson. I got him on the phone. I've known Jed for probably what feels like over a decade, whether it's in person or, or, or presenting at the same places and those types of things. And uh, this past, I'll say, early summer, I ran into him, and we sat down and just had a, a candid conversation, um, realistically, real, I mean, very honestly, out of nowhere. I, I just came down and sat down, and after a presentation was done, we just sat down in the classroom and started talking. And it, it, it was just two professionals trying to share what has worked for them and what do they know now that they wish they knew when they started this, in this field. And uh, I said, Jed, man, i, I got to get you on the phone. And, and I told him, I said, we're going to figure out how to get this done. It is um, – a Thursday mid midday type scenario. I'm hoping to get the show up here on Sunday to start the new surge uh, of the well over 200 episodes we got going on now. And um, man, Jed, uh, to get you to get you started on the show, big dog. Uh, I'm looking forward to having an outstanding conversation with you. I know you and I have talked many times about grip training and, and some other things you got going on. Uh, I don't know all the ins and outs of what you do, so I'm looking forward to just op- you know asking very open questions and learning a lot about. Uh, uh, your experiences and, and what has worked for you from the from the grip training area, my man. Awesome, dude. I'm I'm just happy to be a part of it, dude. We've talked for I don't know how many years, and uh, I've been looking forward to it ever since we talked this summer. So by all means, man, just start firing away. Well, do me a favor, Jed. I, I don't know if everybody knows you on the show, and, and uh, so I want I always want to start the show off with uh, a question about passion. We can post your your bio, and I've said this almost probably in the last hundred episodes. Uh, to me, it's very boring to hear what someone did in 1999 and 2002, and I can post that in the description of the show. And if anybody has any questions, they can email me or email you directly, and we can talk about that. But uh, the question that's never outlined in one of those little bio write-up things is, where is your passion for this field come from, and, and specifically even the grip training side of things? I mean, I'm very interested in grip work, and we do a lot of grip strength training uh, but you are a guy that's actually taken it to a whole other level, including even to a sport, which we will hopefully talk about here a little bit on the show too. But you know, walk me through where your passion for the field came from and then specifically how you got involved with the grip aspect. Yeah, man. I'll tell you, plain and simple, my my passion is just lifting, just lifting in general. I'd love to get down in the gym. It's my release. I get down there. It makes me sane. I can have the worst day in history, all kinds of stress. And I know that I can go down there and I can work out all that stuff through a lifting session far more than I than I could ever do. Uh, more effective than going to any therapist, you know, getting a massage, going for a walk, or you know, laying on the beach listening to the waves crash. None of that could come even anywhere close to just the kind of therapy that is that is lifting just a, just a good solid workout hitting it hard pushing yourself to a limit knowing that your your brain wants to shut it down at eight reps but you're going to go to 10 or maybe even 12 that's the kind of stuff that i live for man and i i love just every opportunity that i can that i can share with people whether it's in a situation with you where we're just talking on the phone about it or if it's a situation where we're at a seminar or, or clinic and we're and we're talking about training or if I'm in a workout session with somebody and, and we're pushing each other back and forth or even just you know when I'm when I'm training people in the gym I have a few clients that come to the my my little garage here in my small town and being able to watch them enjoy lifting that's that's really what it's all about and I'm I'm one of the luckiest, most blessed people in the world, dude, because I've been able to turn that passion into a little bit of a, a career. Not even a job, not work, but, but, a, but a true career that I'm able to, you know, leverage into cool travels, cool activities, get to meet awesome people. I was just at a, 
I was just at something called the AOBS uh, annual dinner, I think two weekends ago. It was the, one of the highlights of my year, bro. And I, I, th- I have all of just my lifting, my lifting interest to think of it uh, for it. So um, that's what it's all about is just getting down in the gym, testing myself physically, mentally, and grip is really just one component of what I do. It's it's the, the most favorite thing that I do, and uh, it's it's probably my biggest motivator, to be honest. Before the show started, we talked a little bit about uh, if, if you want to learn about football, you're going to go to a football coach. If you want to learn about basketball, you go to a basketball coach, but you never go to a basketball coach to learn about football. That doesn't you know, make sense. So uh, to get this conversation started, you actually compete in a, in a sport called grip sports, I know very little about it, and, and to say a little bit is probably even stretching it to uh, a, 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 an area that's probably exaggerating that even. Uh, walk me through this concept of what grip sport is, and how it's really a, a, a impacted or positively impacted your training, and then how can you see it actually being used in, in a sport-appropriate type scenario? I mean, it sounds like a cool, a cool thing to get people involved with uh, from a, a you know competition standpoint in the weight room, but now they're actually calling call it a grip sport. You're telling me there's competitions we can go to it. Yeah, man. Grip sport is is it's always growing, man. It's it's a growing sport. It's kind of underground. You know, you don't see much about it, but it's one of those things where all the people involved pretty much know each other. We get along. We push one another and stuff like that. What it is, man, is if you can if you took a cross of uh, strongman and powerlifting and maybe even threw in a little CrossFit, believe it or not, you would have grip. Uh, All the lifts that are done are contested in a way that you're testing your hand strength, your wrist strength, and sometimes even your your whole lower arm, like your forearms. So there's there's lifts like you know axle lifts that are thick bars that are basically a deadlift, just like you would have in a in a powerlifting meet. Uh, The thing about an axle lift is generally you go double overhand and you can't use any kind of a hook grip. So the your hands are, are tested quite a bit. It's a little bit thicker bar than normal. They're usually about two inches thick. So uh, the, the grip definitely becomes a limiting factor. But I'll, I'll tell you, you do enough axle work and your whole body gets worked. So there's big portions of the year where all I do for my deadlifts is axle work. And when I go back to regular barbell deadlifts, I'm just as strong as I was. I don't lose anything. Um, you know, there's there's things, if you think of a strongman competition that has, like, atlas stone loading or, or medleys or you've got to load odd objects, we've got the same kind of thing in grip sport also. So you've got all kinds of different odd objects, whether they're, they're plate pinching challenges or maybe a steel bar you have to bend, a deck of cards you have to rip, you know, other, other crazy thick bar challenge items that are sitting there and you have to either pick them up to a lockout position or you have to load them onto a platform or just simply bend, rip, tear, and twist, whatever it is, to a completed point in order to get credit for the lift. Um, and then it's even, dude, as simple as just closing big grippers. Man, there's there's all kinds of grippers that are available out on the market. I'm not talking about these plastic things that you can get at Kmart and Walmart. I'm talking about heavy duty grippers with like knurled aluminum handles made out of, you know, industrial strength wire and you've got to squeeze with all your might in order to get the handles together. And we've got systems to uh, in place now to actually uh, rate the strength of each gripper so that we're able to compare from one to the next and see who truly has the biggest crushing power. So there's all kinds of different things that we do in grip sports. Some some of the events have become more standard that you'll see in many, many competitions. Others you don't see as often. Some promoters like certain uh, events and hold them in their competition so you know when you're going to go to the gripmas carol that you're going to have to do a crazy medley and you're probably going to have to do some kind of varied gripper event from what you would normally have to be ready for. So it keeps you on your toes. Um, you know, each, each promoter is able to leave their little fingerprint on the sport in, a, in the way that they want to. It makes it, it makes it really cool to know that it's not the same old stuff every single time. 
so you know that's uh, again man it, it i get really spirited about it because i've i've been involved not not just for a long time but i've seen it grow i know what it what it started as and what it's become and i know that it'll be it'll be getting even bigger as we go forward i'm a big fan of using as many tools as you can possibly imagine um well maybe maybe you can imagine for, far more than i can but for the for the for the normal gym type scenario uh, we have a ton of different type of grip training modalities, whether they're towels or as you talked about the crushing units or uh, farmer walks and carries and all, I mean, there's many things that we can think of to, to actually use, but are there certain types of techniques uh, that you use for training your, your, your fingers, your hands, your forearms as a whole that have really worked for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. The one, one of them that I can point to right away is just general thick bar training or, or thick handle training. So, if you look at the handle on a dumbbell or like your regular barbells, you're looking at roughly an inch uh, as far as the diameter of the bar and handle. And that really doesn't offer too much of a challenge in most cases as far as maintaining your grip. Now, if you're doing really high rep sets of heavy dumbbell shrugs, or if you're going heavy on deadlifts, things like that, sure, you're grip can be tested but if if you want to work your hands in a way that carries over to many different other types of endeavors thick bar is one of your best ways to go because it works your whole lower arm at the same time very intensely so it gets some uh, it hits your 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 thumbs it works your hands your fingers your wrists get tired out and it can even put size on your forearms because there's so much muscle involved and everything's got to work so hard. So, so thick bar is really, really demanding. You're looking, at, you're looking at something that's probably two inches thick or more. If you've got really big hands, you probably want to go even thicker than that, maybe two and a half inches. And now, heck, man, there's, there's companies making thick bar tools all over the place now. You can buy adapters that snap right onto uh, your barbells and dumbbells that you're using, such as fat grips. Uh, it, there's there's no excuse anymore not to be able to train your hands effectively. There's just there's just too many things that are available out there. But I would I generally tell everybody if if you're looking for some way to start training your grip to incorporate it real easily and quickly in your in your current training program. Thick bar is the way to go. If we're talking about programming for grip training, can you actually overtrain? And I hate using that term because I, I really do believe it's a lot about under recovery. But let's work work our way with that whole word. Can you overtrain your grip? How many days a week are you actually going through? Uh, whether it's high rep, high effort, uh, um, strong, heavy, light, low, you know, heavy, low type stuff. I mean, walk me through a little bit of this process of as a grip athlete, how you're actually uh, addressing this area of the body specifically. To answer the, the initial part of the question about overtraining, under recovery, sure, that that can take place. There's there's no doubt about it, especially for people who haven't done this yet. I know there's a lot of people that find out about grip and they they understand, you know, right away how cool it is and how excited people get about it and how easy it is to test yourself uh, in your hand strength. And a lot of people get a little bit overzealous and they try to train it too frequently too soon, and they can either wipe themselves out as far as, like, their CNS getting getting tired, uh, or they could end up straining something and having an injury, uh, tendonitis, things along those lines. So you got to go about it, the, you know, in a, a, the right way. You can't be too crazy. It helps to be a little bit crazy. Don't get me wrong. I've never really been uh, one to say that I'm not crazy I'll, I'll admit to it all right there might be something a little bit off there but you got to use you got to go within reason when you start doing this stuff as far as a grip sport aspect is concerned i've seen a lot of people get hurt too quick because they didn't go go about things the right way but when you're talking if you're just a, a strength coach at a, a university or something like that or an athlete who's just looking to get better it's it's tough to overtrain doing grip stuff because you're not going to devote the same amount of time to building your grip as I would or uh, you know someone else 
who is looking to get into grip strength competitions. Can you overdo it? Yes. Anybody can overdo it if they get out of hand, if you will. But it's it's rare to see just someone like a general athlete just dive in so deeply that they that they have those kinds of uh, problems. Um, one thing I will say is that it's 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 real easy just to stick one exercise in there every every workout that that works your grip a little bit more than usual, and that is usually something that can help people out quite a bit right there. Just throwing in one kind of grip challenge per workout. Uh, you don't need to do it every day. I know some people talk to me, they've got a wrist roller at home that they do, and they squeeze on tennis balls, and they'll do rice digs and all that stuff. I frankly, I, I frankly think that those, a lot of those exercises are pretty much a waste of your time, so there's no need to do those in extra workouts throughout the week. Um, but at the same time, you know, really three or four times a week, is is all you need to do. Most most weeks, I let, I'll tell you, man. I used to do probably five or six days a week of training, and I used to finish maybe top three, top five in my competitions back then. The last three years, from 2013 on, I've won my weight class or been national champion at uh, the North American Grip Sport Championship, and I've been training grip less now than I ever did before. So now I do three or four targeted sessions of grip, four being the, the, the high point during the year, and that's when I'm leading into nationals. No, normally during the year, it's probably only three times, and, and I've seen the best results that I, that I ever have. So I don't see any reason why anybody would need to do more than three or four days of work on their grip. And for most people that just need to strengthen their hands for a sport, probably just one exercise is all they need. As I was preparing questions here, one question came up was that was asked uh, amongst the staff and people that were coming in as we were just having a candid conversation about grip training. Uh, one question was about hand size and how it affects your approach to grip training. And another question was about age and, and does a, does a uh, more mature body have a different approach than a younger body? And I don't know if those two things actually go hand in hand and, and not, you know, pardon the pun there, but yeah. I, I don't know if the, you know, a younger individual might have a smaller hand and someone who's a little bit older and, and trained a little differently or, or has trained in the past, uh, we'll give them training ages older. I mean, they might have a little bit of a, a bigger, stronger grip to them, if you want to call it that. I mean, how do you approach those two different things? Uh, actual, like, chronological age, training age, and then even the, the, the approach of the hand size as an all-encompassing picture. As far as the age thing, okay, uh, I will say for, for younger individuals, you want to keep an eye on the handle size for most things because sometimes young, most young, okay, what I'm trying to say is youngsters are going to have smaller hands than older individuals. So, so someone like an adolescent is going to have smaller hands than a teenager or a senior in high school. So the same implement, one implement that works really, really well for the senior in high school, like a, like a, a thick bar device, might be extremely large when you look at it in the hands of, of the younger individual. So you have to take that into consideration, um, the, the overall size. So the guideline that I would use for a youngster is to make sure that they can touch their – uh, their their thumb to one of their fingers when they're gripping onto the device. Uh, once once a kid hits probably 15 years old, I'd say, then you can get away from that and you can start having them use tools that are that are thicker and you can you can begin seeing a space between their thumb and fingers. That that would be a good guideline, I'd think, for for most people. Um, and then, you know, someone that's had lots of years uh, of intense grip training under their belt, they can even open their hand up even more uh, with, the, with whatever implement that they're using. But I'll tell you, you know, the other side of the equation with age is I've seen people that are, you know, well over their 50s, 60s, even 70s with just brutal, brutal grip strength, crushing just just the type of crushing strength that you would think 
the person's old enough, they would start seeing a deficit in their training, a, you know, a backslide, but, but they don't, man. The, the grip really seems to hold on well into your later years as long as you keep using it, keep stimulating it. So I'll tell you, man, I just, I just, uh, I just shook hands with Slim the Hammerman Farman, who was a guy that was doing strongman shows and presentations in the 60s and 70s. I just saw him probably the, for the fifth or sixth time in my life, and he's still got a bone-crushing grip, and he's well into his 70s. So, I mean, that's something, it's something that will last a long time. So as far as age is concerned, if you're going to work with a young kid, you got to be a little bit careful. But the cool thing is once you get that grip, man, you, you maintain that, you'll be able to see that grip power well into your later later years. You brought up the concept of fat grips, and uh, we use them on a regular basis, whether it's on our bars, our dumbbells, uh, even some of the machines that we have. We can actually just slide them right on to have some uh, thicker grip experiences, and I know that Backgrip now makes a regular one and an extreme for those even larger handled uh, or handed people, for that matter. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about it. if we want to call them grip aids or training aids, and, and I'll general, you know, generalize them as far as chalk and fat grips and even wrist wraps and some of the other things there that people are using. I mean, what's yeah. your opinion on uh, those grip aids? I mean, is there a part of a uh, a grip sport athlete that uses them? Are you saying, hey, don't do them, don't you know, don't use them at all because it takes away from that? I mean, walk me through a little bit of that. Uh, you know, again, what does work for you type philosophy? As far as chalk, that's that's something that brings up some controversy sometimes, and I don't know why. I would I would suggest anybody that's allowed to use chalk where they train to use chalk, and it, and it really comes down to a safety thing, because at some point if you don't have chalk, something's going to rip out of your hand. You're going to lose your grip on it. It's going to slip out of your hand, and the potential there is always present for an injury when that happens, because you're putting on a tremendous amount of force in one direction, and then it rips in the opposite direction. You got the the chance there for a tendon, uh, fascia, muscle, any any one of those things could end up being damaged. And chalk is going to take away that risk ever so slightly. Does it help you grip onto stuff? Yes. Are there feats of strength that I can do because I have chalk on my hands and I can't do them when I don't have chalk? Yes. Do I care? No, absolutely not. Anybody can take a block of chalk and put it on their hands. So... I mean, I don't care. That's it's to me. It's not like uh, performance-enhancing drugs, where you know it's a chemical that you're putting in your body. To me, it's nowhere even close. Even though I've seen that comparison drawn in the past, um, the other argument that I've seen made is, oh, the old-time strongmen of the past didn't use chalk, you know, so I'm not going to use it either. That's fine. It's a personal. It's a personal decision, man. So I I really couldn't care less about chalk, even though it uh, it does become in some cases uh, really controversial. But the thing I caution people on is things like lifting straps. Um, now I, I'm not going to say don't ever use lifting straps because let's face it, man, you don't want your you don't want your glutes, your lower back, your legs and things like that to be underdeveloped because every time you pull on a barbell, you're never going to even consider using straps. You know what I mean? Sometimes, sometimes in order to do the work that you, the purpose of the, in order to accomplish the purpose of the exercise and get the result you want, you need to do more weight than your hands can hold. I'll give you a good example. Um, uh, in certain parts of the year, I will do extremely heavy shrugs. So I might be able to do maybe 405, double overhand, no hook grip, for maybe a set of 10 with 4 and 5 pounds. But I need to switch it up every so often. So, I'll, dude, I'll go up another plate, 5 545, maybe go higher and get near 600 pounds, there's no way I'll be able to hold on to that in a double overhand grip. And I don't like to do the alternated grip if I don't have to. So I'm going to use straps. I use straps all the time. On, on pulling days, I probably use straps 
close to 50% of the time because I'm not working my grip there. I'm, I'm working my body. I'm working my, my traps, my back, shoulders, my core, my, my, uh, my glutes, things like that. They need, they need to be stimulated with heavier weight. So in a, in a rack pull, shrugs, things along those lines, power shrugs, Olympic lift breakdowns, things like that, oh, yeah, you better have your straps there because they're, they're something that you need. So, so those are a couple things. I don't know what else, you know, wrist wraps. If you need support on your wrist or if you feel like, uh, feel like your, your wrist might be injured or something like that, it might be a way for you to get a, a good workout in. I, but I, you know, I just caution people about be, becoming over dependent on them and, and maybe weakening their wrist. But I, I really don't even know what the chances are of that happening. I use, I use, I use wrist wraps all the time myself. One big thing that I talk to the coaches about, and then we'll get in the huddle, is to really talk to the players about outside of program design or, or training philosophy or anything like that. It, it's about helping the kids uh, become confident in themselves, one another. And then within the coaches to players, and coaches to coaches, the confidence aspect of what we do. And, and I like trying to integrate that into some of the things we do in the training, the weight room, those types of things as well. I mean, do you think addressing uh, athletes' confidence through grip training um, could really help uh, you know, uh, elevate uh, someone's personal self-belief? Absolutely, man. And a, a good example is some of the stuff that I do with my wrestlers. I've got I've got a handful, man. Maybe I have three or four wrestlers that come and that come and lift here with me. And when they started, dude, it, it, they'd be they'd be lucky to be able to hold onto the bar through the duration of a set of pull-ups just on a regular knurled pull-up bar. These days, they they laugh at the pull-up bar. That's an easy workout because we do things like uh, you know dog bone pull-ups, uh, uh, orb pull-ups. We, we we slap uh we get crazy man we slap we i took uh i took a pool noodle and i cut that thing up with a with an exacto knife and we slip that over the bar if, if there's a harder pull up than that then i i can't think of it right now i'll tell you what the the thing is just vicious these guys are complete animals with their pull ups now they don't even blink an eye so i i mean i can't, i can't even wait until wrestling season gets here man because there's none of them are going to lose their grip on a guy um, unless they just end up going up a complete beast or, you know, once they get into, you know, later, uh, you know, championship competition, uh, they might find somebody. But uh, around here, I, I, I really think that they're going to have a huge confidence boost this year because, you know, as from the training that we've done as a whole, but also the, the grip work. And I think, it's going to have an effect even on the, the mental uh, side of their opponents because I think my guys are going to be gripping onto them with like either a tight waist, ankle lock, or whatever, wrist hold or whatever, and they're going to say, how in the am I going to get away from this dude? Because, I mean, their, their, grips, are like, their grips are like vices now. I know you've been in the field for a long time, my man. I know you've been doing some incredible things as an athlete, as a, someone who provides content for others to read and, and uh, to watch on video, as well as also presenting and doing live demonstrations to help inspire greatness in others. I mean, what's one big uh, motivational message you would have for people that are potentially interested in becoming a grip sport athlete, uh, getting involved in the Iron Game as a whole, and, and also turning it into a career? I think the biggest thing you can do is just, if, if you want to try something out, then go do it. Don't don't be like, oh man, that looks cool, but there's nothing around, and I might have to drive a few hours. Don't, dude. I don't want to hear that kind of excuse, man. Because when I wanted to learn something, when I first got into this in the early 2000s, I was gone all the time. I, I drove to people's houses weekend after weekend after weekend. I'd go and train with somebody, you know the first weekend of the month and I would go back at the end of the month. And then one of the weekends in between there, I'd go to a clinic or a seminar. Um, I'd read books, uh, audios. I would scour the internet, read posts on forums. If you want to do it, go do it. It's, it's fun stuff, man. And it's not just grip. If you want to learn Olympic lifting, strong man, uh, stone lifting, you want to try some other, 
you want to do a marathon or something, go do it. If, 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 if it crosses your mind, man, go do it. Don't let excuses get in your way. You will be so proud of yourself once you start things like that up, man. It's a, it's a challenge. It's going to test you physically and mentally. It's going to test your will. It's going to test your faith. But just go do it because I guarantee you, you will be so happy. Man, I'll tell you, I'll do a quick story. I'm known for grip strength, but I was I was I was presented with a challenge called the Warrior Challenge in 2013 that involved miles and miles on a beach and all these push-ups is very CrossFit like and the last thing in the world I wanted to do at that time was this Warrior Challenge, but I signed up for it, I committed to it and I am so super glad that I did because it was an experience that I will never forget. Probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, um, in a in a physical sense. Um, I think it's just something where we as human beings need challenges, and I think you should just go and and do them, man. And uh, don't let weak excuses like distance or or all that stuff. I don't know how to do it. Whatever, man. I guarantee you the information is out there that you can that you can find somewhere. Um and don't be afraid to buy a book or a DVD or something like that. The worst thing that I did was I waited too long to actually buy some materials when I started my business. Like I was trying to do uh too many things that I had heard from other people that didn't end up working and then finally I got involved with like a business coach and then I was able to actually get some freedom in my life and uh, and reduce some of the stress in my life and, and really enjoy what I was doing. And that's that's only been like the last couple of years. So business and training, they're not the same thing, but when it comes to getting direction towards a certain goal that you have, they are the same. They run parallel. You need to have someone helping you, directing you, coaching you. It's It's just like a sport. You have a in baseball, you have a pitching coach, a batting coach, the head coach. You might have somebody that specializes in defense with the with the infielders and outfielders. You need guides. People have specialties. Find out who it is in your field that can help you. Go to them, seek them out, and and you'll be so much glad. More, you'll be so glad you did because you get there so much quicker. Well, Jed, man, I know we talked about a bunch of topics here, and I, and I also want to give you a an opportunity. Uh, for anyone who's listening to the show to, to be able to connect with you. And, and I know you have a bunch of different resources. And, and before I let you get going here, the um, anybody listening to the show, I actually reached out to uh, Jed, and, and he, he and I normally communicate most of the time through Facebook, Instant Messenger, and that type of thing. And I I've never, don't think I've ever actually emailed him. I'm sure we texted a couple times, but we go through Facebook. So let's just talk generally about how quickly he responds. Uh, the, the great ones in our field will make time to get back to you in a timely manner. And Jed, as soon as I send a message, he is back to me within normally minutes, if not a half an hour, probably max. And I don't think he just does that for me. I'm, I'm pretty sure he does that for everybody that reaches out to him. So if there's anybody here that has any questions about grip training and that type of thing, uh, do me a favor. Do not hesitate to reach out to Jed and expect a, a, a response fairly quickly. So, um, hey, Jed, man, do me a favor. If anybody has any questions about anything we discussed from from business-related stuff to the grip sport as a sport and, and training board and, and becoming involved in those types of things to – training their grip in their gym or in their garage, as you imply, or, or anything in, really, in, in relationship to just strength training and getting, uh, you know, preparing the body. I mean, how can they go about reaching out to you and finding out more information about what you have going on? i got a lot of resources for people. Um, first off, my, I don't know if anybody goes to websites anymore. I think most people just look at social media, but I do have a, a website that's got like a thousand posts on uh, grip and general strength training. It's at dieselcrew.com, uh, D I E S E L crew.com. You can check that out. And I've got a, a free newsletter there and I email out whenever I put up a new post. Um, I put up tons of videos on my YouTube channel. And a lot of time I'll email about that. My YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Jed Johnson, Jed with two D's Johnson. And, uh, man, I don't know. I think I'm up over I know I'm up over a thousand videos on YouTube. I don't I don't even know where I'm at there now. But uh the the best thing I can do is I just started I just started something brand new. It's it's gonna begin this weekend 
And the the thing that has happened is I've done so many videos and guest posts and things over the years that I, 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 I'm just getting in, inundated with with questions and requests for things on video. So I, ha- I feel bad because I haven't been able to help people the way that I'd like to, um, to the degree that, that I would prefer. So what I just started was something called Team Napalm, and it's going to be a weekly call, and you can ask me pretty much anything that you want to about whether it's grip, strength training in general, weight loss, uh, you know, fitness, preparing for contests, powerlifting, all that stuff, and we're going we're gonna to do it once a week. It's going to be really intense, highly concentrated, and it's going to be results-based. It's, all, it's not going to be, you know, getting on there. It's not a fraternity and hanging out and stuff like that. We're going to be in there. We're going to be firing questions and answers. It's called Team Napalm, and you can find out about it at dieselcrew.com slash teamnapalm.htm. And uh, sign up today because the group is almost full, and I've only got a, a few more spaces, and I actually cut in half what I was going to do because I just I just want to help people out as good as I can, and that's that's the bottom line. I want to I want to get people going in the right direction because I people write me all the time; they're frustrated, and I I can't stand reading another email that people are frustrated with their results. So. I want to start this group up, get people going in the right direction, and start just producing PRs and champions, man. Well, Jeb, man, I appreciate the opportunity here, and, and I know you took, uh, I know you're a busy guy, so taking some time out of your day here uh, is something that, that uh, I obviously greatly respect, and I appreciate our friendship. Uh, I, it's, it's really cool to get a chance to catch up. I know on a yearly basis, then we get a chance to bounce back and forth, but generally on, the, on some type of cyberspace, some type some type of way, um, but uh, I genuinely look forward to, to going up and, and meeting you on a regular basis, my man. When every time I know that you're in town, uh, I try to uh, I look forward to getting a chance to shake your hand and just talk shop and, and hear what's going on in your life, my man. So uh, if there's anything I can do for you, big dog, don't be scared to, to drop me a line or anything for that matter. But uh, uh, I'm looking forward to this being the launching pad for us to do many more things down the road. I know you and I have had conversations about several things we're going to have uh, coming here on both your platform and my platform and that type of thing. And uh, and, and hopefully we can inspire greatness in others, big dog. Oh, yeah, dude. That's what it's all about right there, man. Yeah, it's, uh, we've been talking about this for a while. Good, we finally sat down and got her done. And uh, keep up the good work, dude. I mean, you're involved in a lot of stuff, man. Um, you're doing a great job with the industry. The industry is better because you're in it. Uh, this is a, a great type of podcast that you're doing. And, you know, I know that uh, you like – you like working with people that, that know what they're doing. I, I can see that theme without a doubt from, from what I've seen of you. So, so keep it up, dude. We need more like you.